needs a he needs a healing in his life. So we serve a God that's able, though. So would there be others on your heart tonight? All right. Any others? Okay. Remember this. <clears throat> yes, pray for Scotty. He needs to touch from God. Okay, pray for that request. Others? Or unspoken request, just will lift the hand. Would you stand with us as we as we pray? Father God, Lord, you as we've spoken these requests, God, you you hear every time that we offer up a prayer to you, God, you you hear our prayers. And Father, I know you're probably already working on these, but we just lay these at the foot of the cross, Lord. Because your word tells us if it concerns us, it concerns you. So God, we know that you're looking down. I pray that you would look down with favor upon each one of them. God, we speak healing over the ones right now that needs a healing. God, you are the great physician. By your stripes we were healed. So I just pray that you would just move in a mighty way. Turn each test into a testimony. And Father, tonight as we're gathered here just to feast on your word, God, I pray for each facet of the service. I pray for the singing. And I pray for Brother Eric as he comes and just brings a message tonight. God, give us open, receptive minds and hearts to your word that we may go forth from this place and be the disciples that you called us to be. God, we love you. We give you all praise. And we just want to see you once again high and lifted up. Father, we worship you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Continue to stand as we sing.
heard the call of Jesus and I'm on my journey home. I have held thoughts of sorrow and despair. I am walking with the righteous and I care no more to roam. I'm seeking now a country bright and fair. When my name is called in glory, I'll be there. For the Lord is heard. Sweetest words we could hear is, well done, good and faithful servant. As we uh, continue to worship uh, now with our tithes and offerings, uh, Brother Paul, would you stand and bless the offering, please? Amen. Diane's going to sing for us tonight, so worship with us as she sings. Justice calls for a pay. 
among me but the precious son of god with the scars and thorny crown paid the debt with the blood of the lamb paid in full by the blood of the that tonight. Amen. Let's give the Lord a good hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. Praise God. It's good to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord tonight on this Wednesday night. Amen. We're down tonight. Amen. We've got several missing, but it's good to see you here in the house of God tonight. I'm like David. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I've been waiting, looking, anticipating for this service all day long today. Amen. For it's always a joy and a great blessing to be able to come to the house of God and to worship a living God. Amen. Praise God. But we're glad to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. Have your Bible stand with me all over the house. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Reading at verse number four. Praise God. Hallelujah. First John chapter five. Reading at verse number four. When you have it, say amen. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. Let's go back to verse number four, if you will. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. Let's pray together, if you will. Dear gracious, divine, heavenly Father, Lord, we are so grateful tonight for your presence. So thankful, Lord, for this great blessing that you have given to us tonight, Lord, to be able to assemble together in your house tonight, Lord, and to lift up holy hands and to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, God, for the remainder of this service tonight. We pray, God, that not our will, but the true will shall be done in this house tonight. I pray, God, that you would touch and minister to the hearts of your people tonight, and we give you glory and praise and honor for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord the best hand clap of praise that you've given him all the day long. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
I, I want to talk to you on the subject tonight, the power to overcome. The power to overcome. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, we have the power to overcome. We notice our text, and, and, and I looked at another version of our text, and looked in the Amplified Version, and, and it read like this, For everyone born of God is victorious and overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has conquered and overcome the world. Our continuing persistent faith in Jesus, the Son of God, who is the one who is victorious and overcomes the world. He is the one who believes and recognizes the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Hallelujah. So we, we read in our text tonight, for everyone that is born of God, for every born again believer, for everyone that has been born again, not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible through and by the word of the living God, which liveth and abideth forever. Just as Romans tells us as well in chapter 10 and verse 9 tells us how that a man can be saved. The scripture says to get that a man must confess the Lord Jesus Christ and he must believe in his heart that God has raised him from the dead and the word of God tells us that a man shall be saved. Can somebody say amen? So we find in our text tonight that, that every born again believer is, um, is victorious and is an overcomer of the world. Can somebody say amen? Now throughout the years, Christians has been given many different names. They, they were first called followers of the way. At Antioch, they were called Christians for the first time. The most common name that was given to a Christian was known as a disciple. Paul was a man that called them saints, and they've been called beloved. They've been called believers, and Christians has even been called called of God. But each of these names describes a character characteristics of the Christian. But in our text we find to where that John refers to them as overcomers. Hallelujah. And we find in the word of God, in the reading of his word throughout the passages of scripture to where we are told that we are overcomers. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 it tells us and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Romans chapter 8 and verse 37 tells us in all these things that we are more than conquerors, overcomers if you will, through him that loved us. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse number 57 tells us, but thanks be unto God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So according to God's word, Christians a child of God are to be overcomers. Hallelujah. We were born again, as I said, not a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible through and by the word of the living God to be an overcomer and to be victorious in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and our risen Savior. Amen. Somebody give him praise tonight. Amen. Now, what... The question is to be asked, what, what is the problem that the Christian has to overcome? What is it that you and I has to overcome? Well, John tells us three times in this text that our problem is the world. Amen. I said our problem is the world. What is the world? Well, it's, it consists of Satan and his plans. Sin and his pleasure and his pressure as well. Suffering and his pain. Sensuality and all of his 
pleasure. So the world is anything and everything that stands in opposition unto God. So if you ask yourself the question, what is it that I've got to overcome? It is the world. It is again Satan and his plans. Sin and all of his pleasure. Suffering and his pain. But aren't you thankful tonight that God has equipped us and given us everything that we need to be overcomers in this lost and dying world that we're living in. Amen. Praise God. Somebody give him praise tonight. Amen. Praise God. Now, what, what, does, it, what does it take for us to be an overcomer? Well, we, we've got to apply our faith. That God's given to us. For as the scripture tells us that he has given every man a measure of faith. Uh -huh. So if we're going to be an overcomer, we have got to be as Paul said, the just shall live by faith. We have got to live by faith. We've got to walk by faith and not by sight. Uh -huh. If we're going to be an overcomer in the kingdom of God. Now we are a people of faith today. Uh -huh. I said we are a people of faith today. Uh -huh. For all of life is lived by faith. Uh -huh. I want to say that again. All of life is lived by faith. We open a can of food and we eat it because we have faith that it's not going to be harmful to us. Amen. We, we get on an airplane and sit back with assurance because we got faith that the pilot knows exactly what he's doing. Hello. We, we go to a doctor whose name that we cannot pronounce and he gives us a prescription that we cannot read. Thank God for Brother Jeff. But still yet we, 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 we take it all in faith because faith means to trust. So even in the natural realm, even in the natural realm in everyday living, we put our faith in the things of this world because we feel that everything is going to be all right. You go to the gas pumps and you put gas in your car because you feel like you're going to get good gas. Hello. So, so you put your faith in those things. But, but that's not the kind of faith that, I, that I'm talking about tonight. Uh -huh. I'm talking about that measure of faith that's, that, that's given to us by God. That, that measure of faith, my blessed God, that, that if, we just have, if it's just a grain of a mustard seed, that is faith that will move mountains. I'm talking about faith in God that will move the obstacles out in front of you that will move them out of the way. Hallelujah. I, God, God created us. I said God created us to be overcomers in his power and be overcomers in his word. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But we've got to apply faith. Amen. We've got to apply faith. Now, what, what is an obstacle? What does an obstacle do? Well, an obstacle is, is anything that tries to depress and discourage us from knowing what we have in Christ. Don't you know, as I've said before, that the last thing the devil wants you to know is to know what you have in Christ. Not what you have materialistic. Not how much money you got in your bank. But what you have in Christ. Uh -huh. I'm talking about the joy of the Lord. I'm talking about the peace of God. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost that you've been endued with. I'm talking about the anointing that you're walking in. Praise God. I'm talking about the victory that you have in your heart. The last thing the devil wants you to know is for you to know what you have in Christ. Amen. Praise God. So therefore, he, he, he wants to put an obstacle in front of you. I was reading a story today. And it was a story of a man that, that went to a Little League baseball game one afternoon. And he asked, he asked a little boy that was sitting there on the sidelines. He asked him, he said, 
what's the score of the game? And the little boy said, he said, sir, it's 18 to nothing. The man said, 18 to nothing. He said, boy, I bet you're, I bet you're really discouraged. The man told the little boy. The little boy looked back to the man. He said, why should I be discouraged? We've not even got up to bat yet. Well, some of you get that later on. What's the need? Why do I need to be depressed? Why do I need to be discouraged? Because we haven't had our turn to bat yet. Praise God. If we would only have that same spirit in the church today. Praise God. To say, I know the enemy's attacking me on every side. I feel like Paul at times that I'm being troubled on every side. Oh, but I've got something inside of me. I've got a power inside of me. Praise God. I've got victory on the inside of me. Praise God. It gives me power to be an overcomer in this world that I'm living in. Praise God. And I refuse to be defeated. I am an overcomer by the power of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the moral of the story is it, it didn't bother the little boy at all that they's down 18 to nothing. Because he simply said, we've not had our turn to get up and bat yet. He believed that they was going to beat them. Praise God. We've got to have that same kind of faith today. Praise God. Devil ain't going to rob me of my joy. Devil ain't going to rob me of my blessing, praise God. Devil ain't going to rob me of my faith. He's not going to rob me of my healing, praise God. Because I was created to be an overcomer. I was created by God. Hallelujah. I've been saved by the grace of God. And I've been saved to be an overcomer in the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. The power to overcome. Oh, so to be an overcomer, we, we, we have got to, we got to apply that measure of faith that God has given to us. Now, an overcomer is one that, that believes the promise. I said an overcomer is one that believes the promise. What is the promise? The promise is this. We can overcome. We can overcome. Somebody say, I can overcome. Uh -huh. The overcomer, to be an overcomer, we got to believe the promise. Hallelujah. We have read of the promise time and time again in the word of God. Of how that the Hebrews, they were in slavery, but God released them. Joseph was in the dungeon, but God delivered him. David was overwhelmed by the guilt of his sin, but God forgave him. Jonah was in the belly of a fish, but God released him. Treat him. So time and time again we see in the word of God of how that God gave his people the power to overcome. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. you got to believe the promise that I can overcome. Now, we read of the miracles time and time again in the Word of God. How many have read of miracles in the Word of God? It's full of miracles. From Genesis to Revelation. Full of miracles. How that the early church time and time again was given power to overcome. I, I, I thought about you know, the Red Sea. How that... Moses and the children of Israel, we know the story, walked across the Red Sea on dry ground. Well, I, I, wanted, I just got curious. I wanted to see how wide it was. So I looked in studies. There was a couple of different suggestions and studies of how wide that the Red Sea was. One said it was 190 miles wide. The other one said it was 195 miles wide. Then another study said it was 221 miles wide. Whichever one it was, it was very wide. You know, some of us, if we walk two miles, we're ready to pass out. 
Amen. They, they didn't have Chevrolets. They didn't have Dodge. They didn't have Fords to drive across that Red Sea. They walked on dry ground. So whether it was 190 miles wide, 195 miles wide, whichever one that it was, Scripture tells us that they walked across on dry land. So if my God, God bless it, God can blow upon those waters and split those waters and bring those waters upon a wall by a strong east wind, then you can overcome. Hallelujah. If my God can take three Hebrew boys and can take them through the fire to bring them out of the fire you can overcome praise God if Daniel if he can spend the night in a den of lions without the first bite of a lion then you can overcome I said you can overcome you were created by God you were saved by God to be an overcomer amen praise God Oh God. But we have got to apply that faith. <coughs> Paul, Paul talks about faith. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. He said, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is to me, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. And the charity of every one of you all towards each other aboundeth. Faith being one of the fruits of the Spirit, it starts out small like a seed. Over time, the seed of faith grows until there is fruit. But this process takes time. A tree starts out as a seed and then eventually results in a tree. Our faith is like a tree that needs to grow and be constantly fed in order to produce faith in fruit in our Lies. So we've got to feed our faith. For me to be an overcomer, I've got to feed my faith. Because faith is the victory. Because you cannot please God without it. Are you folks alive tonight? Are you breathing? You cannot please God without faith. So you've got to feed it. How is it that, that, that I feed my faith, Pastor? Well, you got to pray. You got to pray. You got to pray. You got to study the word of God. Hallelujah. Your praise will feed your faith. Your worship will feed your faith. Hallelujah. We have for our faith to grow and to produce the things that are not seen in the beginning. We must feed our faith the things of God. Hallelujah. If we're going to be an overcomer in the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. You've got to feed your faith. Now, to feed your faith is one thing. But to feed it, there's got to be another root there. It's called desire. Now, I found out, there's one thing I have found out in pastoral ministry in the last 16 years. You cannot help somebody that won't help themselves. I first started out pastoring at Kwood. I, I, there was times I went over and above and beyond to help somebody financially and other means. But there came a time I realized they ain't helping themselves. So there wasn't, wasn't no change, so they just, they just kept going through the same old, same old. You see, for you to be an overcomer, there's got to be a desire in you 
to be an overcomer. There's got to be a desire in you that says, I am going to be victorious. I am going to overcome this obstacle that I'm facing. I am going to overcome, praise God, this situation that I'm facing. I am going to overcome this trial and this storm that I am facing. I will not die in this storm. I will not die in this trial. I have been created by God. I have been saved by the grace of God to be an overcomer in the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And I love to help people today. That's not what I'm saying at all. But there comes a time that you keep keep on keeping on. That, that individual's got to, they got to have a desire in their heart that says, you know, I'm going to get up and I'm going to dust myself off. And I'm going to do what God created me to do. Hello. Comes a time that, that an individual's got to get up, got to get a made up mind in themselves. I, I'm going to be an overcomer. I don't care about the curse that's upon my family. The generational curse has been upon my family. I don't care what people in town is saying. I got God. I was born into this world. God created me for a plan and a purpose. Hallelujah. And I know that God can save me and I can be an overcomer in the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. I got to get a made up mind. Oh, because until there is desire there, they'll never, they'll never go nowhere. You know, Brother Joe and Brother Paul and Brother Randy and Brother Jeff, Brother Nathan, Brother Jackie, and the other, any other fishermen, the fishing gang. They, they crack me up. They can be here today and in Alabama by sunrise in the morning. I mean, they can be, you can see them at church, and the next day they're in south. You know what puts, what drives them to Alabama? They got a desire to fish. I have never seen, I, I preached revival in Oak Grove in western Kentucky, and, and, and I thought them boys was bad, but I believe our church has got them beat. Because if they get word that fish is biting, they're gone. They just drop everything they're doing, gone. Jason was telling me, when he was when it's working, he was telling me, he said, you know, Brother Eric, he said, they'd be on, I seen them where they was on top of a roof and had just about 30 more minutes left on the job that they's on. Somebody come by and told them that the fish was biting and they just dropped their belts right there. Their tool belts just dropped them on the roof, jumped off the roof and took off fishing. You know why? It's called desire. Desire. You're here tonight. You know why? Because you had a desire to come to the house of God. People today is losing desire to serve God. Oh, come on, somebody help me. People today is losing desire to serve God. They're losing the desire to worship God. Losing the desire to come to the house of God. Oh, when the Word of God says, Forsake not the assembly of yourselves together, even the more as you see the day approaching. My blessed God. God help us not to lose desire for the things of God. God help us not to lose a burning desire to come to the house of God. God, to worship God and to do the work of the kingdom of God. Amen. Oh, somebody praise him tonight. Amen. God help us. Yeah. Gotta have desire. I said, gotta have desire. Yeah. Now, the Apostle Paul, he, he traveled on foot during his ministry mostly 
He, he, he didn't have an airplane. He didn't have a vehicle. He didn't have a train. But all Paul had was a desire to do it in the obedience to the Spirit of God. People try to stop him. People try to ridicule him. People try to stone him. People try to kill him. But he had a desire. I said he had a desire to preach the gospel of our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. It didn't matter whether he was in a prison or a palace. He had a desire to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say amen. He had a desire. Oh, people today, and it's not popular, but people today is losing the desire. Yeah. Just look how things have changed over the years. The church has changed in the last, just in the years I've been in pastoral ministry. You know why? It's not because of God. He ain't changed. It's because people's losing desire. His desire that drives you to go to a restaurant to eat. It's a desire that drives you to go on vacation. It's a desire that drives you to go fishing or hunting or whatever it may be. It's, it all starts with desire. So to be an overcomer, you've got to have desire that says... I will not be defeated. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lay down. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop. Praise God. I'm coming in the house of God and I'm going to worship God regardless of what anybody else does or not. I'm going to come to the house of God and I'm going to do what God has called me to do regardless of how popular that it may be. I'm going to fulfill the call of God upon my life. You got to have a desire if you're going to be an overcomer in the these last days in these perilous times that we're living in my friend you've got to have the, you've got to have the spirit a desire that makes you an overcomer amen praise God praise God oh because it all begins with desire now there's there's always going to be something to hold on to Always going to be something to hold you back if you let it. Always going to be an excuse as to why you can't do it and you, you, can't, you just can't do what God called you to do. There's always going to be an excuse. And if you listen to the devil long enough, he'll give you plenty of reasons why you don't need to go to church. Hey man, good preaching, Pastor. Yes, it is. There, there's always going to be a, a situation or, or something that you just can't get over, but you got to have desire. I said, you got to have desire. Hallelujah. You got to be like Paul when he said, none of these things move me. What are the things that didn't move Paul? It was all the things listed in scripture, the beatings and the stonings, the shipwrecks, all kinds of hardship and dangers that Paul went through. But Brother Roger, he declared, none of these things move me. In other words, I refuse to allow these things to distract me. I refuse to allow these things I've had to endure to rob me of my desire that makes me an overcomer in the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, so we got to get to a place where we're like, Paul, none of these things move me. Yeah. None of these things, no storm. No trouble, no trial, no sickness. I'm not going to allow it to move me. Yeah. Because every day I get up, it's a fight. Yeah. Every day I put my feet to the floor, it's a fight. Oh, this is what the scripture said. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. There's the trouble. This is a victory that overcometh the world. There it is again. Even our faith. Who is the overcomer? The one that believes. That Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. That's an overcomer. And the piano, Sister Jeannie. 
all had a, was a man that pressed on beyond all of these saints because he had desire that made him an overcomer. I'm not quitting. I'm not going to die in this shipwreck. I'm not going to die in these hardships. I'm going to keep pressing on for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Notice what he said. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but, but forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth under the things which are before me. For I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling. What is that, preacher? That's the testimony of an overcomer. Yeah. It's reason at the end in his words to Timothy, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Oh God. And I have kept the faith. He said, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And not to me only, but unto all them that love him. Love his appearing. Think about those words. I have fought a good fight. What is it? Again, it's the testimony of an overcomer. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have now finished my course. But this last part is what I love. I have kept the faith. Yeah. You're going to be an overcomer. Keep the faith. lose a desire you listen to me if you lose when you lose desire to press when you lose desire for the things of God you've lost it when you lose desire you say preacher that's, that's hard preaching that's, that's hard it may be hard but it's the truth Lose desire to do the things of God. You lost it. The enemy may come, he may attack. He will. All the times that I visited with Sister Sue back there time I go out to pray with her it didn't matter how she felt every time I go to pray with her she'd always pray I always had a desire to pray many times I see her lift her hands worship unto a holy God you know what that was that's desire What's, what's wrong? Why, why are we seeing it? Why are we seeing the things that we're seeing today? Why are we seeing the change in church? As, and I'm talking about as a, as a whole in general. Why are we seeing change? Because people are losing desire. Because when you, when you get to a place that you don't feel like you can overcome, you lose you lose the fight. And that's the reason the enemy don't want you to discover what you have in Christ. But until the day the Lord if I'm alive and the Lord returns or, or if I go by the grave I've got a made up mind. I'm going to be an overcomer. I may get hit at times, may get knocked down at times, but I'm going to get right back up. I'm going to dust my feet off. And I'm going to remember my identity in Christ. I'm an overcomer. Because he's given us the power to overcome. 
I say he's given us the power. His word in our text and that tells us he's given us the power to overcome. He's given us the victory to overcome. Hallelujah. I said he's given us the power and the victory that we need to be overcomers tonight. Hallelujah. All you got to do is believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he is the son of the living God. Hallelujah. He's not only the son of the living God, but he's my Lord. He's my Savior. And he's my all in all tonight. Hallelujah. That's what makes us an overcomer tonight. I want you to stand with me all over the house. I don't know what you're facing tonight. Don't know what you're going through tonight, but God does. I don't, I don't know what your need is, but God knows. And if you believe God's given you the power and He's given you the victory to, to overcome whatever you're facing tonight, I want you to come get around this altar tonight. I want us to kneel all across the front of this altar tonight. Let's pray and seek the face of God.